So in the last panel that you heard, um, we, you, you heard references to the Trail Stewardship Initiative, and our um, group presentation is going to talk about what that is and what we've been working on. So the OpenStreetMap US organization came up with this program, this Trail Stewardship Initiative, out of the Trails Working Group that formed from a very interesting request that came in to OpenStreetMap. And so for background, I want to introduce people to that. And I know a lot of hands went up when people were like, oh, th is this your first time at an OpenStreetMap conference? So I want to talk a little bit about what our data is and what the issue is that inspired this really, really cool initiative that we have going. So in our mailbox, we got a dear OpenStreetMap email that said, hey, I am working in Canyonlands and we have this problem with trails where we have an unofficial trail that people keep landing on and our official trail looks like this in the maps. And we need to, um, for safety reasons and environmental reasons, try to do something about this because how people are led in various different apps into these places, it makes it a little bit difficult for land managers to work with. So this is an example of what the National Park Service map in Canyonlands looked like in that region. And um, Carrie Nelson, who I don't believe is here yet, but I think she's going to be here tomorrow, was the one who wrote that email into us. And so this is what the official map looks like at the National Park Service. But at the time she wrote that email, this is what various other renderers showed that as. So you can see that the unofficial trail on top of Cedar Mesa is quite prominent and it attracts people as something to go to and want to use. So we thought, you know, that is completely right. We need to figure out what's going on. And what's happening here is that underneath various apps, like here's an example from Gaia GPS, a lot of that source data is OpenStreetMap. So the, the map, the data that we contribute, that we create, goes into Gaia. It also goes into all trails. And they have a really, really tough job of trying to figure out how to render their information if we don't have enough information for them to work with that data. So what the Trails Working Group started doing is looking at the tagging schema that we have that we will eventually will talk with like the government um, organizations that we just heard from on the panel about how do we add more information for this. So right now, if you put in, if you're, if you're not familiar with OpenStreetMap tagging, highway equals path is a very common way to mark what a trail is. But it might be <laughs> the only way that um, people will tag a trail. And that might be the only data that's sitting there. So there was a lot a lot of um, information that only had this tag and nothing else. But it's not very descriptive, it just means trail. And so the renderers, when they're looking at that, what can they do with it? A highway equals path can mean many different things. And so trying to think about different tagging schemas that we could do to add to it is important. And um, Jake is gonna talk about um, some of the results that we came up with after we figured out some of the priority tagging that is really the first low-hanging fruit to be able to help this. But this is why the Trails Working Group came together and the Trails Stewardship Initiative grew out of that. So we've had a really, really successful um, gathering of people at the same table where we have mappers and we have people from the private sector and from government all coming and talking together in these by, um, we have meetings every um, two weeks to talk about these issues and work on them. And we've gone through best practices for tagging trails for some priority pieces, developing some tag, tagging guidelines, and then started a pilot in the um, Northwest 
and Jake's going to show some results from that. And then that connection to land managers like TJ, who's been there from the beginning, just really having those feedbacks about how do we do this and grow this well together. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jake to talk about what we've done so far. Yeah, so um, we have been meeting every two weeks for like three years now, and um, we've done, oh, thanks. Um, we've done a lot of work, and I want to take you through it really quickly, um, just to give you an idea of what kind of projects we think are important and where we think we can go with OpenStreetMap Trails data in the future. Um, so we started uh, with a pilot project in Washington. Thank you. Uh, we started with a pilot. Can everyone hear me? Yeah? Thanks. Um, we started with a pilot project in Washington, which is where I live. Um, and uh, our goal for the pilot project was essentially to identify what the most important data gaps were in OpenStreetMap trail networks and what it would look like if uh, hiking apps, which we call renderers, uh, had access to that data. What could they do with it that would impact the way people used those trails? Um, and it boiled down to we really wanted to be able to better describe the, uh, the management status of trails. There's a lot of good data in OpenStreetMap for describing physical characteristics of trails. Um, the coverage of those tags is not universal, but it's good. Um, but the coverage of tags that described, is this an official trail, who manages it, what types of uses are allowed on that trail, the coverage of that data was really poor. So we started looking at what's, what are the critical data gaps um, and what, um, what can renderers do with that data if it existed. So this is, uh, a diagram that Zeke Farwell put together of the guidelines that we came up with. And I'll pause on this slide for a second. There's also a URL at the bottom. This is on the wiki if you want to check it out. Um, but the things that we identified were the operator tag to describe what land management agency operates a trail. Or if no uh, management agency operates that trail, then uh, adding informal equals yes instead um, to indicate that that's a social trail. And then in addition to that distinction, we wanted to capture what types of uses are allowed on the trails. So can you hike on the trail? Can you bike on the trail? Can you bring your horse or your dog on the trail? Um, and once we had established these tagging guidelines, um, we went through, we identified a bounding box in Washington, and we attempted to completely tag every trail in that bounding box with uh, all of those tags. Um, and that took a couple of months, um, and we, uh, at the same time, were working with renderers, was specifically with Gaia GPS and all trails at the time, but we've had a lot more participation um, from Onyx and from uh, other contributors uh, in the work group since then. Um, and we were working with them to look at what the rendering results could look like for those types of trails. Um, so we came up with these suggested rendering guidelines, and basically what this says is, if the trail is an official managed trail, most renderers are going to want to emphasize that trail to their users. And if the uh, trail is unofficial, then um, we, we think that they should either de-emphasize or hide those trails from most use cases. Um, and this is one of my favorite slides. This is what All Trails came up with. I think this is the work of Emmy Loxo, who's a cartographer at All Trails. Um, and this is showing a before and after of the edits that we made to OpenStreetMap and the changes that All Trails made to their cartography to reflect those edits. And this is a really braided, informal trail network in a really sensitive alpine lake ecosystem. And after these edits, it's much more obvious to users of this trail network where they ought to go. These are the main official, like maintained, designated trails um, that where their impact is going to be lowest. So I'm going to speed through the Utah pilot because we're running out of time, and I need to uh, give enough time for Maggie. Um, but we have we're currently working on a pilot project in Utah, a larger scope project. Um, we are working on um, the uh, on engaging with more stakeholders, so Utah State and uh, local agencies. We're also working on improving the workflow for these pilot projects um, so that uh, mappers who aren't necessarily like intimately familiar with the work group and their goals can more easily get involved. Um, we're also working on identifying priority areas that cross different land management agencies. Uh, as I think Brian was saying earlier, nobody goes, nobody says, I'm going to hike a U.S. Forest Service trail today. Trails that people use cross land management boundaries. Um, so we've identified three different pilot areas that cover both uh, national and um, state and, uh, sorry, both National Park Service, uh, Forest Service, and state land. Um, 
And we're working on mapping those right now, and we would love anyone who wants to get involved, uh, come find us afterwards. Um, the workflow, really briefly, is basically uh, in OpenStreetMap open editors like id and our id and Jossum. Um, it looks like, you know, find a trail. We've, we've created uh, bounding polygons for these trails. Um, you load them up in the editor. You go check official sources like the National Park Service website or the Forest Service IVM map um, to see what the status of that trail is. Uh, and then you update the tags. And then those propagate out to all these apps that people are using. They get better data on the trails that they're hiking on. Um, so I'm going to uh, skip this, ta this slide on trail network stats, because I don't think we have time, but I'll throw it up here in a second. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of indications that other people besides us are using these same, tra these, these same tags. Um, uh, the trail network in OSM is growing a lot, which is really exciting. And the completeness of the data is growing, too, which is really awesome. Um, so Maggie, uh, I think, has a few minutes left to talk about what's next for the program. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Two minute warning. OK, I'll go fast. Things down the path. Um, well, as you might have already deciphered, a lot of what we're doing here is, is talking about this initiative. Um, so there's quite a few sessions this, this conference to kind of figure out what it is, but we do have an idea. Um, Right now, what we're addressing are gaps in existing trail data. Um, one of the other attributes, gaps. Um, but one of the other problems to address is actual gaps in line data, uh, the trails that are missing. Um, and, and we're trying to come up with ways for that data to be added so that it can be used, to Elizabeth's point, by both government agencies and OSM. So, so that's where public domain map comes in. We will be talking about this later, so I will breeze through that. Another elegant solution we're looking at, I mean, you just saw that workflow. It's awful. <laughs> I, we've done it, but it takes about 20 minutes per trail segment to update. And as many mappers of you out there know, if it's going to take that long, you're probably going to move on to something else. Um, so one of the big things, the big challenges we are hoping to overcome through the rest of this year is building a better solution for updating existing trail data um, for mappers, so that you know, even if you're out on the trail, maybe you're maybe you're using Onyx or Gaia. Maybe there's a plugin to say this trail is actually closed. I can't bring my dog. Stop telling me I could bring my dog. So figuring out those feedback loops, but also on the OSM side, what is the tooling we need to build? And Quincy's going to talk about Open Trail Map um, at a future session. Um, a tool that we can build to enable people to update these attributes quickly so that that knowledge gets to the end user faster. So, you know, if it's a closed trail, if it's a dangerous trail, if people are treading upon some really sensitive ecosystems, how do we get people to know that as soon as we can so that we reduce that, those impacts? So this is what I just said. That's awesome. <laughs> um, it's still in beta, uh, but I guess I'd look for Quincy's talk. Um, we have a presentation on what that dream looks like, cue heart emojis, and, um, and how we can come together as a community to find the resources we need to build it. The other big thing, I know I'm out of time, but I have, would be missed if I didn't mention this, um, is scalability. You know, how do we scale something like this? It's, it's one thing to say, yay, we mapped all the trails in Utah, which is really big, by the way. But, how do we do that as a community without you know, spending gazillion dollars? And, and one of the, the ideas we have is there's already networks out there, especially in the recreation space. Many land management agencies have GIS professionals. There's many stewardship organizations, nonprofits that manage trails, you know, like Ice Age Trail nonprofit. And they even have a GIS person. Um, a lot of trail groups have knowledge in-house. Um, Appalachian Trail Club has a GIS person on staff. Did you know that? Isn't that awesome? So there's already these existing roles and networks that exist. So how can we better leverage them to inform folks and enable them to bring their data uh, to the map? So the Digital Trail Ambassador Program is something we'd like to build and Somebody's phone's ringing. Um, build and pilot this year as well. Um, so stay tuned. And if you're interested in joining the conversation, um, you're welcome. This is how it would look. Like I said, there's many people out there already in the space. Um, and you know, they'd be, the role of the digital ambassador would be to you know, engage local volunteers, help with the validation steps, engage with local partners, land management partners, and other trail clubs, and kind of be that node for, the, for their trail or for their area. 
Looking ahead, we still have a little bit of validation to do in Bryce, but I think we're very close. Um, one mapper actually reached out to the park to answer one question that we had about one of the trail stems, so that was pretty cool. Um, expand and improve the tooling, like I said. Scale the outreach and programming. That's, that's part of the reason we're, we're talking about this here is, is to get more folks involved at all different um, sectors and um, design that, that digital ambassador program. Work with our federal partners to see how we could support the Mapland Act. Um, and also secure more sustainable funding streams. Um, OSM US has been sorting, supporting this trail working group with zero funding for the last three years, and um, it makes it really hard for us to do. So what's, we've created the Trail Stewardship Fund, um, and we're gonna start fundraising pretty actively to support this initiative. Ways to get involved. Um, there's the Slack channel, it's trails, uh, hashtag trails. You can sign up to join the working group. Uh, like I said, we meet twice a month. Um, you can donate and you can sign up for a newsletter. We put out a newsletter about the Trails Initiative every quarter or so to keep you updated. Those are, we'll post the links. <laughs> da, 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 da. Get involved in OSMUS. And then I just wanna say thanks to all the folks who've already been involved in a Trails meeting. Who here has been to a Trails meeting? Awesome, let's meet in real life, so that's great. Thank you so much. <laughs>